Hello everyone and welcome back. So in the previous video, I showed you how to build this app with a button and then it just changes colors when you click the button. But today we wanna to take it a step further and we want to have this button change colors every time we click it. So I want it to go from blue to red and then back to blue and to red whenever I click it. Um, we can start by changing this name to red, blue because now we have two colors. And then the difference is going to be in the logic and the blocks. So what is the problem here? So what, what we really want to do is ask a question to the app. Like if the, if the color of the button is blue, change it to red. And if it's not blue, then we want to change it to blue because it's probably red. And the way that we're going to do this is with something called an if else block. And I'm going to explain to you how this works in just a second. But first, we need to also take care of something else. It's that um, there are so different shades of blue in our in this working environment. So we want to make sure that our button is set to the correct kind of blue, the correct shade of blue, so that when we ask questions about it, it doesn't get confused or we don't have the wrong kind of blue. So the, so when the screen starts, so this is just something that happens as soon as the app is launched and that screen is opened we want to set um, our buttons blue to um, to this blue. Okay, so now we have this blue here and we know that it's gonna be the right one when we use it in here. So back to our if and else blocks. Um, what an if block is, it's basically asking a question about our app. And then if the answer is yes, we do one thing. And if it's no, we can do another. And we can stack these if else blocks to, um, to ask multiple questions. So the way that we're going to do this, check that, um, that our button is blue or not, is going to be with what we call an equality. So we're going to check if the property of the button is blue, the, of the background color of the button is blue, and we're going to do something. And the way that we get the the color of the background is going to be clicking on our component. And then under our set, we're gonna have button one's background color. So this is what's called a get. So we have sets and gets, even though it doesn't say get in here, this, this is get button one's background color. So what set does is modify things. And what get does is um, get the value of it. So ask like, what is it? We want that information. So if button one's background color is equal to blue, so we can take this blue here now. Can I do that? Okay, actually, I think I'm gonna have to grab another blue from here and then use the same one here and there. So if the background color of our button is blue, then I want to set it to red. And then we could also ask, um, we could have a code that asks like if the background color of the button is red, then we want to set it to blue, but we don't really have to do that because we only have two choices here. And if the background color is not blue, we know for sure that it's gonna be red. So then we want to set it to blue. So I'm gonna take one of these again, and I'm going to paste it in here. And instead of setting it to red again, I'm gonna go into this color and pick this blue. Okay, and we can get rid of this red. Nice. So that's it basically. Let's just test it and we can talk about the code again just to make sure that we get it and we know what it's doing. So let's go in here. And when I click this button, it turns red. If I click it again, it turns blue and it just keeps toggling like this. So back into our blocks, we have this event handler and then inside we ask a question. So is the buttons um, background color blue? If it is blue, we do this. So we set it to red. And if it's not, we set it to blue. And then whenever we click the button, this event handler gets triggered and this question is asked. So that's how it keeps um, changing the colors. So what is really happening in here? So remember we talked about this hidden memory and by the way, this is just a representation of it. So it, this isn't actually what it looks like, 
but it's close enough. So we're keeping track of the state of every component. So for this one, it's just a button. So notice that when I go in here and I make changes, you can see that in the background, we still have this initial state, which is remember different from the um, hidden memory. So the hidden memory is initialized as the initial state, but then as I do things, as the user does things, um, it'll keep updating it. So when I click this and now it's red, it's gonna go in here and update this to red in the back end where the user can't see it. But if the user does something else and clicks it again and it becomes blue, then the hidden memory is going to be updated correctly. So what we're trying to get at with this is that um, we're building a very, very simple artificial intelligence. So this is how we build intelligent properties into our applications. This is the basic structure. So we have an event handler and then inside the event handler, when that event happens, we can ask a bunch of questions and we can apply logic accordingly. So as a programmer, you should always, when you're coding, you should always be thinking about this hidden memory. So you should be keeping track of the state of everything. And then how does the memory change when I do something? When the user does something as a, when the user takes an action, how does it affect the hidden memory? Then how should I code to, predict that memory and then make an outcome that's um, that I want. So that's basically it, if and else statements with the click blue red app.